let's read what can also help us. Let's read this story. I'll read scriptures for you when we talk. How many of you are going to pray all the time? Lift up your hands. I was reading this Genesis 39. From 1 to 15. From, from 1 to 15. Genesis. Genesis. 3, 9 from 1 to 15. I won't read all 15. the verses, but I just want us to go there. Genesis 39. The story of Joseph is a great lesson. If you read from verse 1, from verse 1. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the guard, an Egyptian, brought him of the hand of the Ishmaelites that had brought him down Tita. And Jehovah was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. He was in the house of his master of Egypt, Egyptian. Master the Egyptian. And his master saw that Jehovah was with him. And that Jehovah made all that he did to prosper in his end. And Joseph found favor in his sight. He made him, he ministered unto him, and he made him overseer over his house. And all that he had, he put into his end. And it came to pass from that time he made him overseer in his house and over all that he had that Jehovah blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of Jehovah was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand. And he knew not aught that was with him save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was commonly and well favored. And it came to pass after this thing that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. And she said, Lie with me. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master knoweth not what is in me in the house. And he hath put all that he hath into my hand, and is no greater in this house than I. Neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And it came to pass, as she spake to Joseph day by day, that he yearned not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time that he went into the house to do his work, and there was none of the men of the house there with him. And she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. And it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth, that she called unto the men of her house and spake unto them, saying, See, he has brought in a Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came in unto me to lie with me, and I cried with a loud voice. Can you see that? All right, I won't read, continue. Let's pray for Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, I was reading this story. I said, ah, this was not an ordinary story. Uh, because when I check here, I found this man, Joseph, he knew where God was taking him. I was just reading about him. I said, this man knew from the beginning, when he started to dream dreams, it was not easy. He, he never understood what was happening, but he was telling his dreams to his parents, to his brothers. But when he started to be tough like this, he started to have understanding because God began to bless him. Wherever he goes, go bless him. You will be spared where he's supposed to be killed. 
But now we can see where we are reading where he was in Potiphar's house. What I was learning about Joseph was he remained a faithful servant. Just right, remain faithful. Remain faithful. Remain faithful. This man he knew that Potiphar uh, had everything through him. And he had opportunity to sin against God. Joseph had opportunity to do wrong, but he said he can't do that. When I was reading about the wife of Potiphar, I was asking myself why always she was troubling Joseph, lie with me, lie with me. I found that to her was not a problem. This was just a great test to Joseph. Joseph knew Joseph he was there as a servant. I, I can still say to you that it was possible that it was possible that when Joseph agreed or Joseph and you find the wife of Potiphar say, I didn't know you were like this. Because if you read going down, you find the wife of Potiphar say, Look at this Hebrew. Because, in other words, the wife of Potiphar knew how the Hebrew live. So, automatically, the, this wife was being used to check his faithfulness. It was possible that though he had futures of a great man, all those appearances that were affecting the lady, she still regrets after she has enticed him. I mean, she could still regret and say, you're not supposed to have done this, you have done that. that, let me tell, tell the master, get out of the way. The, the, there, there was no way that Joseph could survive if he agreed to be enticed. But this lady was behind, lie with me, lie with me. Lie with me. Lie with me. Automatically here, the last challenge was when challenge the Bible Bible says, hey. now there was nobody, there was no man in wow, that was place. And there were two. And but this man proved a point that is a true Hebrew. Listen to this. You, when you are checked in your faithfulness, you know, there will be this small temptation, that small temptation, that's what, but there will be a day where you are being checked when you are alone. And there's nobody who's watching you. Whether you are faithful, or we are there, I mean, or you remain faithful. I, I don't know if you are here either. You, you see, you are Christian now because you are here. But there's a day that when it comes to you, you'll be checked if truly are you still remaining faithful. That was the day that Joseph got. Where where no man was not there. And the lady was still speaking the same language. Lie with me. And this lady, uh, don't ever think this lady was just an ordinary lady. This lady of Potiphar, Potiphar was very rich. There was beauty in this woman. I mean, makeup. Makeup. Eye flashes. Eye eh? <laughs> flashes. Eye flashes. And, and all things. They were there. <laughs> and then also she was dressing expensive. <laughs> Brazilian. Uh, Hers was on her head. <laughs> Brazilian. 
wearing expensive earrings and then everything was perfect to rob this young man. But this man said, no, 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 I know how God brought me here. I must remain faithful. Just remain faithful. These are the preaching I've been preaching for years. That once you are faithful, that does not mean that Satan won't tempt you. But you will find a space where you are low. And you'll be checked if you mean you are faithful. Though you are like that, remain what? Faithful. If you read 2 Kings 5, 20, 27, just read there. You'll find the story of a prophet where there was another prophet who was supposed to be taking over. And this man was Gehaz. So he was saving under Prophet Elisha. So when Prophet Elisha was living on that time, he was different with us. Prophet Elisha was different with us. We, we are, we are prophets of money. And then Elisha was a prophet who doesn't collect any gift anywhere. So, you know, prophet Elisha, what he did was, I can heal this man, but I won't take from him. After he healed, he said, go away with your money. When the man went away, he said, no. I need money. Let me go on the other side. He went in the name of a prophet. Because we are, we are living in a time <laughs> where people <laughs> get things in the name of a prophet. <laughs> Even girls went in the name of a prophet. <laughs> and they demand the money and say, I said, give me this, my master. <laughs> and he was given. He <laughs> went to hide it. <laughs> When he hide that, <laughs> the Bible says he came and stood in Bible front of the prophet. As if, as if nothing has happened. As if nothing has happened. When I was reading that story, I said, this story is a very painful story that is happening. We are living in a time when when you come to church, it's as if nothing has happened. You, you come like you are a very holy person. But you are remaining unfaithful before God. Can you just touch somebody and say, the way you come to church is like you are a holy person. But you are always remaining unfaithful before God. Gaz was just like that. His focus was money. He wanted to get something. But also he was pretending in front of his master. And the Bible says when Bible he stood there, there, when this man, where were you? He can still lie in front of the men of God. And they said, no, my spirit was with you Listen there. Listen to this. Gehaz failed in his assignment because when he was checked in his faithfulness, he was found he was not faithful. Can you tell the number of my friend? If you are checked in your faithfulness, you can fail in your assignment. I don't know if you're hearing that. If you are checked, 
in your faithfulness and you are failing you are also failing in your assignment automatically you have to be ruled out if you read there you will see that that was the last day Gehaz stood I mean, to, for girls to stand before the prophet. Look at this John 14, 28, 21. John 14, 28, 21. When Jesus shows that Jesus for him to go to the cross, he does not need anybody. He says, no one can go to the cross. In John 14, 28, 31. John 14, 28, 31. He says, this is the will of his father. And it's part of seven. In John 17, 1 to 5, John 17, 1 to 5. He shows that he is ready to empty himself. By fulfilling the command of his father. Listen to this. When Jesus was going to the cross. There was a lot of temptations. Remember the time when Peter. Took him aside. And said Jesus don't go there. Don't go to Jerusalem. And when Jesus turned back. He sees Satan in him. And he just says Satan. Get behind me. I must remain faithful. I know no one is killing me. I'm obeying the command of my father. Can you tell us as my friend? You need to obey the command of your father by doing that. You are becoming a faithful servant. Are you hearing me? By doing that, you become a faithful servant. Listen, sometimes the commands that you are given are not easy. I can give you an example. Let's talk about Jesus when he was led by the Spirit. To go and fast 40 days and 40 nights. It was not easy. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will lead you to do things that you are not feeling you can do. That. Those commands are not easy. Sometimes when you do that, you feel like you are losing your life. But when you remain faithful, you are entrusted with another assignment. There are some people who are listening to me here. I want to tell you something. Around you, the devil is bringing people who are affecting your assignments. Remain faithful until you reach there. There's a place that God has set for you. He wants to take you somewhere. But it won't be easy for you. You'll be tested and checked. But tell yourself that by faithfulness to the one who will die on the cross, you can still resurrect and reach somewhere. Don't be afraid of losing your life if you are standing in the truth. Don't be afraid of losing your life if you are standing in the truth. Listen, faithfulness is to deal with the flesh and to bury it so that you hear from God. When the flesh rises, when you are faithful, you bury that flesh and you hear the spirit of God. From today, by your faithfulness, you begin to hear the voice of God. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Look here in Luke 16. From 10 to 11. Faithfulness is checked there. On what you are given. On what you are given. Listen to this. 
you don't need other things. Faithful is checked on what you are given. For example, I'm a pastor here. My faithfulness will be checked by my pastoring here. You are an usher. Your faithfulness will be checked in your ushering. In what you have been given. Whatever you have been given, if you hold it, brings a profit. I don't know if you are hearing me. I don't know if you are hearing me. If you hold it faithfully, you are bound to go to another level. I don't know if you are hearing me. For example, as I preach it to you, if I preach to you faithfully, I want to tell you this so that you know. God gives me more assignments in the preaching. But if not, even my preaching will be cultured. I don't know if you are hearing that. So if you are failing to be faithful, you are eating up the assignment that God gave you. There are some people who eat up themselves and they become empty. But I want to tell you something. As you are hearing to, as you are hearing the sound of my voice, God is giving you a better assignment. Just remain faithful and something will happen. Do you want to see something happening? Remain faithful. Where you are. You know, faithfulness teaches us that our characters must resemble of Christ. Faithfulness teaches us, number two, to hope more unto him. In other words, a Christian of faith believes and trusts in him alone. And that is why he can resent to him by remaining faithful. I don't know if you are hearing me. If you are saying I'm faithful, you are saying, okay, everything that I believe that I need is coming from him. But the reason why you are faithful it means there are some resources that are not coming from the one you are supposed to trust. Because you are faithful because you trust. The reason why you trust is because you know you will carry out the promises he has spoken. That is why you remain faithful believing that what he said, one day it will come to pass. I don't know if you are hearing me. Ask your neighbor, say, are you faithful? Are you sure you are faithful? Listen, it is easy for you to be found if you are a Christian. Just get a challenge. Just challenge. Because your Christianity is not checked when you are excited. It's checked when you have got a challenge. So when the challenge comes, you are checked your faithfulness. So a Christian that will move and go through and overcome that challenge. challenge is the one that will see the challenge, challenge but still remain faithful. I don't know if you are hearing me. I see you succeeding I see you succeeding this year. I see you remaining faithful. I don't know if you are knowing what I'm talking about, but I want to give you this prophecy of the challenge that is coming. It will take you to a higher level. I see a challenge is to check your faithfulness. But tell yourself, I'm not afraid of this challenge. I would rather remain faithful. I'm, I'm not afraid of the temptation that I'm going through. I would rather remain faithful. I must find the scripture that correspond with my problem and hold the scripture until today. I don't know if you are hearing me. We need Christians 
Christians who are saying there are many solutions that can come my way. But I believe in the word. I believe in the word. I will be faithful holding this word without wavering knowing that God will fulfill his promise. I don't know if you are hearing me. Are you faithful? Are you faithful? Are you faithful? Are you faithful? To him. Are you remaining faithful to him? I have learned a lot. I found that there are some people who are faithful to people. But they will never be faithful to God. You know, in front of you they are faithful. He says good some people are faithful in relationship. But they will never be faithful to God. Somebody just say I love you so much. But you can't tell God I love you so much. And that faithfulness affects the real faithfulness that God has given you. Because God wants you to say I love you so much. But this love of some are so much you are bringing it to a person. You are not bringing it to God. And that love so much remain untrue. Because the one you are supposed to be faithful to, you are not faithful to. I don't know if you are hearing me. It must start you in your faithfulness in him. When you are faithful in him, automatically when you say, I want to be faithful to God, it will matter. Let me prophesy someone who is listening to me. I'm seeing you with a new assignment. I'm seeing you with a new assignment. With a new assignment. After the challenge you went through, I see your marriage and I see your progress. But remain faithful. I see your blessing. I see your car. I see your house. But remain faithful. I see your ministry growing. But remain faithful. I see you with a new assignment. But remain faithful. Remain faithful. Listen to this. Sometimes when blessing come to you, they are not blessing. They are things that are checking your faithfulness. That is why you will lose them soon. I don't know if you are hearing me. Look at this Hebrews 3 verse 1 to 2. By Hebrews 3 1 to 2. We must consider him who was appointed, meaning Jesus. He was faithful. And Moses also was also faithful. If you can look at that verse, the Bible says, take him as an example. Jesus was an example of faithfulness. Even Moses was an example. Even Abraham was faithful. Many of us we are looking at our Christian life. Problems are rising. Challenges are coming. Let's consider him who was faithful. If you look at this other verse in Matthew 25, 21 to 23, you will find that faithfulness is the way of better responsibility and blessing. On that scripture you will find faithfulness is a way of better responsibility. If, if God wants to lift you up, be faithful where you are. It's a way of better responsibility and a blessing. Look here, I want to give an example. If God said to you, wake up and pray, and you don't wake up, he won't tell you again. He will tell another one. If he comes to you a second time, it becomes a judgment to you. It means you can hear it. And automatically you will search for someone. The reason why in the time of Jerusalem, the disciples were hiding is because of the fear 
of what they saw. But God could not even send them. He sent someone outside of Jerusalem. For you to get a better responsibility and a better assignment in life and a blessing. Because any responsibility comes with a blessing. So for you to do that, you remain faithful in your obedience. You do what God wants you to do. Exactly what he wants to do. I was told that I must carry on preaching and carry on praying for people and I will be blessed. And though I'm looking at my challenges, I must not be afraid of them. I must just carry on and I will be blessed. I carry on and, I carry, and I'm still carrying on and I remain blessed. Your responsibility comes with the blessing. Tell me about your responsibility comes with the blessing for you to get a better responsibility is when you remain faithful in the ability that you have been given. I don't know if you are hearing that. I see some people that God is raising now as I'm speaking. I see a better responsibility that is coming to you and a blessing. Look here, God can send you there when you succeed, he will send you again. The reason why God will keep on you sending you, sending you. he'll be looking at your faithfulness. I was speaking with uh, Mama today. She was concerned. She said to me, why many young people who are called when they're invited they mess around and take money of people and do whatever. I said to Bama, they don't have a hope of being called again. If you have got a hope of being called again, automatically when you reach there, you be faithful. When you are faithful, you are also telling the one who called you to call you again. He won't call you on the same responsibility. He will call you in another level now. For you to rise up to another level is when you are faithful on what you have been given. I don't know if you are hearing me. I don't know if you are hearing me. Can you ask your neighbor, say, are you faithful where you are? How many of you are faithful? Be faithful in marriage, in your job, in whatever. The reason why people are failing, their focus are in the present. They are not on the future. I don't know if you are hearing me. That's why your focus must not be in the present. Must be on the future. If you fail in your responsibility now, by unfaithfulness, no one will entrust you with the better responsibility. I prophesy someone to a better responsibility. I say, I prophesy someone, you are receiving, are receiving a better responsibility. Are you ready for better responsibility? Are you ready? Remain faithful.